This video will demonstrate the partial extraction of a mandibular canine tooth in a cat that has tooth resorption. And if you'll note on the radiograph, you can see that there is obliteration of the periodontal ligament space and replacement with bone going on in about the apical one-third of that tooth root. You cannot make out tooth root versus bone. So when we do a partial extraction, we want to eliminate anything but that. And if you, see, if you look at that area in the pulp cavity that's enlarged, that could be granulation tissue inside of that. So this is a very similar radiograph to the tooth that we are going to be extracting here. And the approach is exactly the same as we would take to extract a normal mandibular canine tooth that's been affected by periodontal disease or fracture, um, it being normal meaning not tooth resorption. And so as we're progressing through here, we've made an envelope incision. We're not going to be doing any vertical releasing incisions here. We don't need to do that to extract the mandibular canine tooth. And again, this is exactly the same approach as we would take if this were not a tooth with tooth resorption. We want to be able to expose the bone. We want to get down to where you saw that differentiation between the tooth resorption portion of that apical one-third and the rest of the tooth. And visual observation will give us that determination on how far uh, to go down, but we are actually going to be outlining the tooth root as we would normally uh, during extraction and extracting the portion that is still resorbing in the coronal two-thirds of that root. So as you see here, what we're doing is we're using our periosteal elevator to loosen the attached gingiva at the entire margin around that marginal bone. And then as we loosen part of that throughout that whole margin, we'll then start to work uh, a little bit more aggressively to uh, remove more tissue apical uh, down to the middle mental foramen, which will expose, and then we'll take bone away from that with a burr down to that down to that area. So right here where we're working, because of the resorption, there's a little bit of bone expansion there from periodontal disease as well. And so the tissue is a little bit more adherent to that area and it's a little bit more difficult to elevate. So there's going to be uh, a little bit of a ding in that gingiva, as you can see there, because of that. And that will be excised at the end of the procedure. That's not a big problem uh, because it's a very small area. We can take care of that at the end when we're through. So right now we're working to get more exposure. We're working distal and now we're working toward the, the mesial part of the attachment, trying to release that tissue. And then we can turn that periosteal elevator over once we've got reasonable exposure and we can use the larger end. This is an EX9 uh, feline periosteal elevator from Syslac and we're using that large portion now to expose majority of the bone after we've done our fine tuning. You can see there um, once we pull that tissue back, that's the middle mental foramen just beneath that elevator. <clears throat> so you can kind of see how that bone is, is fimbriated at the edge. It's not normal. It's a little expanded. Uh, and so now what we'll do is we'll use our crosscut tape and Fisher burr or 701L burr uh, to remove the vestibular bone. And you can see that tooth looks pretty normal at that point. So again, this is, this is partial extraction. Uh, I like to refer to it as partial extraction versus crown amputation because we're not really just removing crown. We're removing part of the tooth that is still normal there and possibly some granulation tissue. And do you see how that's bleeding right there? That is, that's tissue down inside of the defect where it's starting to resorb that is bleeding granulation tissue. So we're removing uh, that abnormal tissue in addition to removing the bone to expose that tooth root prior to extracting it. 
we're taking care not to get too far distal. We don't want to disrupt that middle mental artery and nerve if possible. Uh, if you do, it's not a, a huge, uh, associated with huge, a huge amount of morbidity at all. It'll bleed. Uh, the thing we have to worry about is did we damage the nerve and will that cause uh, discomfort or pain in the future? But you want to try to stay away from that if at all possible. Uh, the bleeding is not a major factor there if it happens, but we're more concerned with the nerve uh, getting damaged and then having some neurogenic pain uh, as, as a result of that. So now we are, we're outlining the tooth, we're creating a zone around the, what we can make of the tooth as it exists there in that coronal two thirds uh, to outline that so we can luxate that out. Using the periosteal elevator as a retractor allows you to keep that tissue out of the way. You can see the tooth outline there fairly well. You see we're using our finger on that same hand that we're using the, the hand piece to kind of use the patient as a resting point so that we've got more control over that instrument. We always want to do that when we're working with cats in particular because they're so small, we want the maximum amount of control that we can have with our instruments. And now we're placing the luxator on the distal aspect, trying to gain purchase there so that we can <clears throat> luxate or elevate that tooth out that is still a tooth remnant uh, void of the resorption apically. And you can see it just kind of fractures right off there, right at the area where the intersection is between the resorption and the tooth that's still fairly well formed in that coronal two thirds. So um, that's, again, it's not a crown amputation. Uh, I think that's a mis, uh, mis -term, misused term. I think it's more in our hands of partial extraction. <clears throat> and then we come back and we can visually see where the remaining portion of that tooth root that's being resorbed and the bone is still somewhat present. So we're going to remove that till we get down to bone. We're going to make sure there's no pulp that that's there that no bleeding pulp uh, as long as that's the case there's no granulation tissue then we're in great shape we're uh, leaving tissue that's being resorbed by bone and we can close after we recontour that gingival margin to make it nice and smooth again so right here we're using that diamond football burr to smooth the bone and we're also using it on the lingual side of the bone to release that tissue from the bone so that we can place a suture through that and do that easily. You can see here, we, this is after uh, we've contoured the bone and removed it on a similar patient. And then now, uh, you can see we're going to pull that tissue together. We've got plenty of tissue to close um, after we excise that small ding that we created when we were creating our flap. So uh, with this, you don't really need to get any additional tissue. Sometimes you might need to dissect a little bit, but you can see we've got plenty of tissue there for closure. And that's how we do a partial extraction of a mandibular canine in a cat.